Hello, Mr. Martin O'Hare again, or your favorite teacher. Today's lesson is going to be on linear equations, and it's part of our algebra course. An equation means that whatever is on the left of the equation sign, and it's there in brackets, is the same as what is on the right of the sign. And we must always try to maintain that equation of both sides. So we can always write 6 times 3, putting our equation sign is equal to 18. Or we could write 6 times 4, which is now 24, is equal to 21 plus 3, which is also 24. So we can put in our equation sign and we know that's correct. We could also have something unknown in our equation. In this case, if I said 6 times y is equal to 42, we would probably need to find a value of y to make that equation make sense. And that's what we're going to do later on in the video. Another form of that equation is 6z plus 5 is equal to 41. In other words, there's a value that we need to find for z that would make that expression true. So we, we use a method called balancing to solve unknown values in an equation. And the principle of balancing is to keep the sides of the equation always balanced. We can apply any math operation to one side of an equation, but it will stay an equation as long as we do the same operation to the next side of the equation. So let's take a look at just a simple example. If I have 6 times 3, which is 18, is equal to 14 plus 4, that equation makes sense. However, if I minus 3 from the left-hand side, left-hand side now becomes 15. And I cannot say that 15 is equal to 18. So what I need to do is I need to do the same operation, minus 3, on the right-hand side. So now I can write 15 equal 15. If I wanted to multiply the left-hand side by 2, that would mean 15 times 2, which would become 30. To make it an equation, I have to multiply the right-hand side by 2 as well. And therefore, we can now write 30 equal 30. The key here is to make sure that whatever you do on the left, you do on the right. Or whatever you do on the right, you do on the left. That way our equations are balanced and they make sense. That balancing now allows us to solve equations because we use the balancing method to move things around the equation sign. The idea is to move every number onto one side and have a single variable on the other side, the variable that we need to solve. We do this by doing the inverse operations on the numbers that are there already. So let's take a look at an example of solving an equation. So let's say we want to solve 7x plus 4 is equal to 25. It means we need to find a value of x that will make that equation true. So we started off by writing it. I then see that there's a plus 4 on the left hand side and I want to move that away from that side in other words, I want to get rid of it, so I minus 4 from the left-hand side. But I have to minus 4 
from the right hand side as well. In other words, subtract 4 from both sides. So when I simplify that, the 4 has disappeared and I now have 7x is equal to 21. I'm looking at 7x on the left hand side and the key is to try and get rid of that 7. I'm multiplying 7x's, so the inverse operation is going to be divide by 7. So if we divide both sides by 7, we get x is equal to 3. And that's our answer. So go through this slide again to make sure you understand exactly what you need to do. And then we can start doing some questions on the next slide. So solve the following equations. It should take you around six to eight minutes. Use the balancing method and you can pause the video at this point in time until you're finished. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what the answers would be in each of those situations. And those are the answers on the right hand side that would satisfy the equations on the left. It means that when n is equal to 3, we can say 3n plus 5 is indeed equal to 14 because 9 plus 5 is equal to 14. And we can do that for all of those equations. This is a very important topic, so we need to get a lot of practice with it. So we have another set of equations. So once again, solve those equations. And you should take around the same amount of time, between 6 to 8 minutes to solve them. So you're going to once again pause the video until you do so. Okay, so let's take a look at these answers now. And you can check your answers against the actual results to make sure that you've gotten the correct answers in all. If you have missed any, I suggest you go back and try them again. Hope this has been helpful. This is Mr. Martino for your favorite teacher.